this compact is sort of been inspired by some uh, a recent interest in the kind of music that you've been playing maybe like the darkness, uh, the kind of um, 80s punkish metal. Yeah, I, I, to be honest, I, I just really decided to, um, you know, I went for the energy of Generation X, the the um, attitude of Rebel Yell, and the mix of the greatest hits. I thought, you know, because I was sort of following up my own greatest hits, because for a lot of, uh, of our younger fans, it's as if the greatest hits is the first album, and now Devil's Playground's number two. <laughs> so, um, so I, I really went all over the, the Billy Idol map, and you know, if I could, I wanted to fall off, you know. But uh, maybe that's the next album. You know? <laughs> We're going to fall off on the next album. It'd be all chill music. What happened to the rock and roll? But uh, no, I mean that's what uh, I thought we did, and. Um, it was great fun, you know, because uh, in a way that's what I have to do now, I think. I have to follow my path, follow my star, that's what I'm left to do, you know. It's, I've sort of originated what I do and now I've got to keep on perusing it, so to speak. Hi Billy, uh, John Soder from the Cleveland Plain Dealer, the newspaper in Cleveland. Uh, as you approach the half century mark, I wonder how your perspective has changed as a songwriter and uh, is maturity a dirty word, or is that something you embrace? Well, you know, I mean, I've got a couple of kids, and so at some point or other, I, I did face less much responsibility or maturity, or or maybe, you know, you just had more experiences that, that could turn into songs one way or another. I mean, that was one great thing about um, sort of taking that time away from the music, and, you know, instead of beating my head against the wall, and you know, just getting blood, no songs. <laughs> you know, it's kind of good fun to to sort of you know come down a bit, let other people have a bit of fighting, the grunge movement, let them fight for a bit. We'll stand back. We did the we were in the forefront for 20 years, for Christ's sake. So you know what I mean? Uh, wasn't so bad to stand back. And then you know you have these other experiences, like experiences with my children, or or you know my. My marriage fell apart, then I had other love relationships that went up and down, up and down, up and down. You could write about all that and you're sort of singing about what's really happening to you. And um, songs like Cherie on the album are about that. Songs like Evil Eye are, are about that. Right? Even yelling at the Christmas tree. I spent a whole Christmas yelling at the Christmas tree. So, <laughs> yeah, at least I was personalizing the Put the phone there, you mother. F <laughs> Don't blink at me, you piece of. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> so you see all those balls hanging there, you know, brass balls, yeah, you know, you can really hate it. It's just it's really frightening. <laughs> so it's funny to write a song about a bit of a dysfunctional family, and, you know, I'm the head of my own dysfunctional family, so. <laughs>